Well, Bubble Butt is a song that we did on Major Lazer's album about bubble butts. And, uh, <laughs> is that the one you did the video? Yeah. In, yeah the video? I've seen that. Yeah. Okay, it's a crazy video. It is, yeah. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Paul Simonon. Uh, I'm Mitch Jones. This is Diplo, and that's, this is Back and Forth on Noisy. Have you guys even heard Major Lazer? Yeah, oh, definitely. Yeah. I got all the records when you got in touch with us, so I had like a, a binge on you. But you haven't heard any Major Lazer yet? You heard any no, I haven't, no. So I think well, I good. might have, and I didn't realize it. Maybe you probably haven't heard it. <laughs> <laughs> His iPod, it I, like he a, actually has like the oldest iPod in the world, so. He's I, got so much stuff. In the studio, I actually destroyed his iPod. I tried, he tried to give me like some cowboy music in it, just the whole thing erased. It's like the iPod one. It's, it's, it's interesting to explain because you guys were doing stuff in reggae music decades before me, but you guys were the first ones to kind of go out there with like a rock and roll attitude. I mean, you know, you get inspired or you hear stuff when you're growing up and that sort of does in some ways dictate your, your outlook. And uh, I think like musically, when we did do a cover of a song we liked, we tended to be, uh, to put our own stamp on it rather yeah. than slavishly we'll copy it. Well, we had a bunch of songs on the last album. We shot a lot of the videos in Jamaica. We just shot a video in Jamaica uh, we were just talking about it last time. We shot Bumae in Jamaica. This video we shot it like in a 90s style dressing and everything. I just did a show there in, in January or December and it was crazy to have like a concert in Kingston and just people were out there and um, we had almost like 4,000 people come see our show and it was just wild. We never expected that to happen. And I think right now is a great time yeah. for music there. So much, so many young people making music and it's very cool. But I want to talk one more about the, st the story you guys had when you guys got run out of Jamaica. Well, previously, the Rolling Stones had been in the studio and they'd splashed a lot of money around to keep everybody happy. So Rolling Stones ruined it for everybody else. They came sort to of did. Exactly. And, uh, and so by the time we were there, we weren't really being supported by the record company and we weren't in nowhere near any financial situation. In fact, I think at a brief time, we were sort of living off my girlfriend's credit card at the Almost, time. Almost, you know. But uh, anyway, so Mikey Dredd, who was holding the whole show for us uh, in the studio, we were recording. And then after recording one song, we started on another one. And then there was some sort of weird atmosphere. And what happened is the guys that are running the studio, they thought either Mikey was holding back on the money or, or we were holding out. So then Mikey came into the room and he said, uh, you know what? we got to make a run because they're going to send the gunmen. The gunmen are on the way down. And so we, we just sort of jumped in somebody's uh, hired car and drove, raced off. With all the equipment going, juggling in the back. Did you guys make it out of Jamaica? We went and uh, went to Mikey's house, didn't we? Yeah. So as a kid in the, in the 60s in England, in London, was just cool to have, to have like dance hall? I mean, like for, re for reggae music, were you just listening well, to? Well, it, it's, I mean, it's because of the environment. It's where I grew up, in, in that part of London. There was a lot of people from the West Indies. Their children, well, we, their kids went to the same school I went to. Yeah. So, you know, you sort of hang out with your friends and make friends and, and you share sort of musical and sort of, uh, you share ideas and, and listen to each other's music and stuff. And uh, yeah, it was a big influence on me. Did you guys have something to do with the Wild Style soundtrack? Did you guys ever pick music for that? We knew those guys, not really, and yeah. Charlie o Ahern Char had yeah. made that movie, but we were like, very close it to was some very of those, we were friendly like with same, those guys, yeah. Same drum sounds though. And some of the some, same, some of those records, it's like, really the same. Like when you hear like, when you listen to like Radio Clash or records like that, yeah, it's like the same much. exact it was kind of sounds. Just after that time, you know, and yeah. then we went in to do that. It's funny, I got into them through being a hip hop fan. I was listening to records like Radio Clash or as a DJ, records like Rock the Casbah or, you know, even like BAD, his stuff. And it's like, then I got back and learned about like more of the punk rock stuff that they were doing. But as a, as a DJ, I got into the music first, the groovy stuff, and then learned more about the other stuff that they did. But yeah, these, all, these guys also were really uh, influential within like bringing hip hop, I think, to a lot of people's ears in England. We were lucky because we were in a place when it was all like just starting. If you travel as a group, when you go to a place, you get to meet the, a lot of the artists of the place and you kind of, it's kind of cultural, you know, so that's well, It helps what, having that open, a backstage open policy. Yeah. So anyone who wants to come backstage can come. So you never got robbed though? No. We, didn't have, backstage we didn't have anything to rob. <laughs> I know, we got so much food and, and yeah. drink that we made it. Just too many crazy people now, I think. Do you guys have any stalkers when you're 
touring America? It wasn't like that then. It was, a, <laughs> it was a different concept of uh, celebrity culture entirely, you know. It, just was, it was completely different to how it is now. I have just crazy people everywhere, man, nowadays, it seems like. We were in Jamaica actually shooting a video, and this one guy, we had this bus, we were shooting the Get Free video, and we had this bus we were riding around, and this old guy, just walked, we were like leaving the studio one day for uh, uh, taping some sessions we were doing, and this old guy walked in the bus and just sat in the front seat, like next to the, the, the door, and just like, pretend to, kind of was pretending to sleep. We were all on the bus, and we were like, Eventually, we were about to take off. I was like, anybody know this guy? Like, I don't want to be rude, but does anybody know this guy? And we, picked, we like, woke him up, and he was like, what? What are you waking me up for? He's like, we, we don't know you. Like, why are you on this bus, like, sleeping? <laughs> and eventually, we had to, like, get out. He was trying to stab our, our driver and stuff. But um, that stuff like that. But sometimes people are just backstage, and they'll just, like, drink your drinks, like, pretend they're your friends and stuff, and just, like, leave with a bottle in their jacket. Yeah, I think it's mostly the booze. Sometimes they want me, too, but I, don't, I just don't <laughs>